Hello and welcome to another episode of Nerd Paints. If you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe below and if there are any models that you'd like to see painted, go ahead and post some comments below as well. I'm pretty excited for this one. We're going to paint one of the intruders from the game Nemesis. So I saw this game on Kickstarter not too long ago and it totally reminded me of the Alien movies, which I, I love the Alien franchise. The game arrived and it's pretty awesome. In this game there's a room covered in slime. And also when these aliens attack there's a chance your character could also get hit with slime. So for this model, we're also going to be adding some slime and some blood towards the end. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I've already primed mine with black. And if you wanted to, I also posted a video on how I personally prime my models. If you want to check that out, go ahead and head on over and watch that video. After you primed yours and let it completely dry, I usually give it about a good 10 minutes after I've primed it to let it completely dry, 10, 15 minutes. But for our first paint, we're going to grab Abaddon Black. And then we're also going to grab some Death World Forest by Citadel. And I'm going to add both of these paints to my palette. I've already added on here, just side by side. And then as you can see here, I've created a mix, basically a two to one ratio, two of the green to one black. I just want to darken the green by a little bit. And then I'm going to go over and paint all of his skin with this color. So just go through and you're going to apply probably two layers. It goes on fairly thin as you can see here, but when you're done, then go ahead and go over it a second time. You just wanna make sure you get all the skin areas, the little skin that's attaching up here. And once you're done with that, we're gonna take some Rackarth flesh. I'm also gonna add this to the wet palette. I'm gonna put this right next to the green, and then I'm gonna create a shade somewhere just right in between these two. So I'm gonna mix these two together, and then add a little bit of water if you need to. So we're gonna use this to go over a lot of the highlights. Just make sure you don't get it into a lot of the crevices, keep those dark, but we're gonna go over the tops of the legs. If the light is shining down on the model, then you wanna do a lot of the highlights kind of based off of that. Nice thing about working with a wet palette is you can work with the different shades. I'm gonna go just straight on Rackarth Flesh and then add a few more highlights with this. Tops of the legs, on the top of the skin, maybe on his neck. And then once you're done highlighting with that, then we're gonna take some Incubi Darkness, Incubi Darkness, sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. We're gonna go ahead and start painting the exoskeleton. So again, I'm gonna add a little bit of water so it doesn't go on too thick. And then just paint all of the exoskeleton. All of his armor, his tails, everywhere else basically, we're gonna paint with this. These little spikes that are coming out on his arms, his head. And you may want to switch to a thicker brush to paint his tails. Go ahead and go over it a second time if you need to. But once you're done, and once it's completely dry, then I'm going to take some hoth blue and I'm going to get a dry brush. Go directly from the pot, and then I'm going to grab a paper towel and just get a lot of the excess paint off. But as you can see, I'm getting a lot of the paint off of my brush, just using the, even the ridges on this cup. I'm going to start just above the model and just slowly start fanning it across as I'm bringing it down until it makes contact with the model. I don't want it to go on too heavily, but I'm going to dry brush pretty much almost everything on the exoskeleton. Try and steer clear of the skin. I'm going to start with the top of the head and just go over a lot of his armor. Then when you do this, make sure you go across the different ridges. Don't go with it so you don't get it into, into the different creases. I'm going to go over the tail. If you need to use your finger to just kind of help give the tail a little bit of support. And I'm pretty much going over the majority of all of the armor with this. Just dry brushing across. On the back, his arms, his legs, pretty much everywhere except for the skin. And then once you're done with that, I'm going to take some Ulthan Gray. Clean off your dry brush and make sure it's completely dry. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to be more selective over where I'm going to dry brush this. A little bit on the top of his head, his tails, his chest armor. Again, just being a little more selective on where I'm going to dry brush this. I'm going to go across the tops of his tails, not staring clear from underneath his tails because that's going to be more, it's going to be dark, the light's not going to hit that. And again, I'm going across the ridges. Once you're done with that, I'm going to add some of the Ulthian Gray to my wet palette. I'm going to create a shade somewhere between 
that dark blue and the Othian gray. I'm now gonna start filling in the shades in between, that the darker and the lighter that we just highlighted with the dry brush, just to blend it in a little bit better. Now as we build this back up, I'm gonna to switch to the darker blue and then work my way up to those highlights using the different shades on your wet palette that we just created. So after I've added that Ulthian Gray, created a mid-tone, then I'm gonna to switch to the dark and add a little bit more to the darks and then add some to the mid-tones. Work my way up to the highlights to where I'm pure Ulthian Gray again, just to, just to blend in the, what we just dry brushed as well as the darker tones. But make sure it's fairly thin and you can switch between these different shades, going over the highlights, the darker, and the shades in between. So one of the things I love about using a wet palette is you can mix and work with the different shades. But as you can see, I'm steering clear of going over a lot of the highlights. I'm switching also to the darker paint and then filling in some of the dark areas or going shading in some of the darker areas. And just going back and forth between the different shades. Filling in some of the mid-tones. And again, I'm going to go over the highlights again. And just going back and forth, pulling some of the highlights, pulling in some of the darks, some of the mid-tones, just going back and forth between these different shades. Once you get to a point where you're happy with, then go ahead and move on. If not, go ahead and hit pause. But for our next part, we're going to now go ahead and work on the shading. So I'm going to take some Seraphim Sepia. And then I'm gonna take this and go straight from the pot. I'm gonna add some to his skin. I'm gonna go over a lot of his skin with this, especially in the darker creases. As you can tell, I'm not going over his knees or some of the more highlighted areas, but the mid-tones, the darker tones, I'm gonna to go over that with the Seraphim Sepia. Maybe in the creases in his neck. I almost say about 80% of his skin, I'm gonna go over this, just mainly avoiding some of the highlighted areas. add some into his mouth. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna to switch to Druka Violet. I'm gonna start shading some of his armor. And same thing as before, I'm being more selective on where I'm gonna apply this. I'm not going over all of it, but going into some of the creases, just to add a little bit more of a purple shade. But again, avoiding the highlighted areas. So I'm gonna add some to his back, into these creases back here. I'm gonna go over his shoulder, and then a little bit into his tail, or his tails. Might even, once his skin is dry, I'm gonna add a little bit of this into his skin as well, just to give it a little more tone in here. Again, avoiding a lot of the highlighted areas, just adding it here and there into his skin. Just to give it a little more color in here. Let that get into the creases here into his legs. Once you're done with that, I'm gonna take some Drakenhof Nightshade. And again, I'm going straight from the pot. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this into his armor as well. I'm probably gonna add more of this than I did the purple into his armor. Again, especially going into the dark areas, I'm gonna add a lot of this into his tail, let it get into the creases here. I'm using a little bit of a larger brush on this, especially for the tails. Maybe right here into the creases on his head. Again, I'm avoiding the more highlighted areas on top, but just adding this into a lot of the armor. Maybe just a little bit into the creases here in his legs. Not very much. And maybe just a little bit up here on top. Again, just in the creases. I don't have a ton of my brush. You don't want it to pull up in there. Just a little bit. Okay, go ahead and hit pause and wait for it to completely dry. I'm going to go back to Ulthian Gray off of my wet palette. I don't have a lot of my brush and it's fairly thin. I'm just going to reapply some of the highlights. Maybe some on his chest here. I'm going to add a little bit on top of his head just to re-highlight that. So if the light is coming down from on top, he's in the ship, so it's going to be a little bit darker, but you know there's still going to be some light in here. so. We'll go ahead and add a little bit on top here. Maybe on his back. Again, just some of the more selected highlighted areas. 
Maybe just a little bit on top of his knees here as well. Let that blend in. My brush is fairly thinned out, so it's not going to... You'll still have some of the paint underneath come through once it dries. Okay, and once you're happy and ready to move on, I'm going to take some P3 Mara White, or if you want to, you can also use White Scar from Citadel. And you don't need very much, I'm just going to paint his teeth. After that, I'm going to take some Abaddon Black from my wet palette and paint the tips of his claws and also the claws on his feet. Okay, I'm going to let that completely dry, and then for our next step, we're going to go ahead and work on the base. So for the base, I'm going to first take some lead belcher, and again, I'm going to use a dry brush. I'm going to dry brush this onto the base. Again, make sure you don't have very much on your brush. You're going to work it into the bristles, just as we did before, take a paper towel, and just work a lot of that off of your brush. Along with the base, I'm going to add a little bit onto his tails and onto these spikes, just to get a bit a little bit more of a metal shine to the points. Maybe some of these spikes also on his tails. I'm not going to go over all of it, but just add a little bit of a metallic shine to that. Okay, so before we move on, I want to show you a few examples so you get an idea of how you want to paint your base, how much slime you want to apply, and how thick you want to make it, and also how much blood. On this particular one that I'm going to do, I'm going to add a lot of slime and a lot of blood, just a heads up. So, but I want to show you a few examples of what I did so you can get an idea of how much you want to apply. So this first one, um, I didn't add very much slime, so you can look at this as an example if you don't want to put too much on there. But I just applied a little bit here and there as well as some blood. From this intruder, I added more slime and more blood than that first base. This is the first intruder that I painted. Now that for this third one, this is an example that I did where I didn't apply too many layers, so it wasn't as thick as you can see. It's just kind of settling down into the different ridges on the base. And I also didn't add as much blood as what I'm going to do on this one that we're painting right now. So take a look at these three different models, these three examples, and just kind of get an idea of what you want to do for yours. Again, the one that we're going to be doing right now, I'm going to add quite a bit more slime and more blood. But this will give you an idea of what you want to do, how much slime and how much blood you want to apply to your model. So kind of get that visual in your mind and, and decide how you want to do it. If you just want to do little blotches or if you want to go all out, which is what I'm going to do. But once you have that in mind and once you have an idea of what you want to do, then for our first step, we're going to take some typhus corrosion. And we're going to go over the different areas where I want to have it rust. So in my mind, I'm thinking that the slime is going to cause the metal to rust a little bit. Uh, maybe the slime's been there for a little while or... You know, maybe the metal is just rusting just over time. So if, again here, add as much or as little as you want. In preparation for our next step, I'm going to take some Lauren Forest and add that to my wet palette. As well as some Moot Green. And I'm going to put that right next to the Lauren Forest. And this is going to be our first layer for the slime. And then I'm also going to grab some Flash Gets Yellow. And I'm going to add this to my wet palette as well. And then once the base is completely dry, I'm going to grab some Rise of Rust and I'm going to grab a dry brush. I'm going to dry brush this over all the typhus corrosion. This will add that layer of rust. For my next step, I'm going to take some Stormhost Silver and again, get this on my dry brush. Make sure your dry brush is completely clean and dry. And then we're going to dry brush this in some select areas, mainly around the edges of the rust. And then once you're done with that, then we're going to switch back to our regular brush. I'm going to create a shade between these two greens. And this is where you want to decide how much slime you want to add because this is going to be the base for the slime. So you either add this in a lot of areas or just splotch it in here and there, however much you want to add for the slime. But I'm going to just start blotching it in here. Now for that third example I showed you where the slime wasn't very thick, then what you would do is just thin out your brush a little bit. But again, just blotch it through wherever you want the slime to be. Then while that's still wet, I'm going to quickly switch to the Flash Gets Yellow. And I'm going to just swirl this into the, the middle areas of the slime. And just let that blend in. I might take some of that and some of that brighter green and add it to the palms of his hands, maybe on top. Because I'm going to add a little bit of slime to his hands as well. Maybe a little bit in his mouth. And then I might even add a little bit of slime on this, you know, on the skin here, connecting the, his, his armor on top. 
maybe a little bit on his legs. Wherever you want to add just a little bit of slime, then go ahead and add this for your base. Wherever you imagine you're going to have slime. Again, I'm going to add a little more, more to the base because I'm just going to go all out on this. This is based off of that room that's covered in slime. I'm going to let that completely dry. Once that's completely dry, then you're going to take some Nurgle's Rot going straight from the pot and start apply this on top of that green shade that we have for the slime. Now this is, again, if you don't want it to be very thick, you're going to apply it on just pretty thin, let that dry, and then add another layer and just keep building it up if you want to, however thick you want it. So I'm going to keep adding more and more for mine and maybe even apply it on just a little more heavy on some of the base. I'm going to apply a little bit to his tails as well, just here and there. Give it a little bit of a wet, slimy look. And then wherever I added it before, on his hands and his mouth, a little bit on his legs, I'm going to add some more down here on the base, just to make this completely covered with slime. Just adding a lot of slime here on the base for mine. Add a little bit on his legs. Again, go ahead and let that just completely dry. And then once it is dry, then we're going to take some blood for the blood god. I'm going to apply this directly from the pot onto my brush. And I'm just going to blotch this onto the slime. As it gets towards the edge, I'm going to just thin it out, just keep brushing it through, just blotching it on. As if you just tore someone apart here. Maybe add a little bit onto his hands, because, I mean, why not? He just tore someone apart, so we're going to add someone to his hands. This is kind of a bloodbath in here. A lot of slime and a lot of blood. Add some in his mouth. And you can add as much as you want or as little as you want. Or don't even add any at all if you don't want to add any blood. Totally up to you. I'm going to smear some across here with using a dry brush as well. Across some of these different edges and on his spikes, on some of his armor. Maybe a little bit on his hands. Nice thing about a dry brush, it just it helps to give it a smeared look. Maybe add a little bit more on his base, and then some more on his tails. Just random places where I think it may have splattered. So as you can see, I've got a lot of blood here in the centered area, and letting it thin out towards the edges. But I think this looks pretty cool, so I'm going to let that completely dry. I'm going to now go back to Abaddon Black and touch up the edges of the base. So I'm just going straight from the pot, maybe add a little bit of water, or you can go to your wet palette if you still have some on there. But I'm just going to touch up the edges of his base here. I might even go back and grab some more Nurgle's Rot when the base is dry and add a little bit on top of the blood so it looks like some of the slime is going over the blood. Maybe to just let it blend in or mix in a little bit better. While that layer of Nurgle's Rot is still wet, I'm going to grab some blood and just kind of swirl it around in here so it looks like it's mixing in with the slime. All right, I think this looks pretty cool. Let it completely dry, and I think we are done. So once you're finished with yours, let it completely dry, then you're going to want to seal it with a lacquer. Make sure you wait a good 30, 40 minutes for that lacquer to completely dry. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and add some art coat to this as well to give it a further wet look. So with the art coat, I'm going to go over all the slime, all the blood, as well as some select areas on the model itself, on the intruder. Just give it a little more of a wet look, like I said. So I'm going to add some of this into his mouth, onto his hands, the tips here where the blood is on his armor. Maybe some into his, some select areas onto his tail, maybe his back, some of the creases here on his legs. Anywhere I want it to give it kind of a wet look, even the top of his head as well. Just as before, it's totally up to you, however much you want to add or how little you want to add. After that, I think we are done. I think this one turned out pretty cool. If you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe and post below in the comments if there are any models that you'd like to see painted. You can also head over to my Patreon page if you'd like to support further videos. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and found some useful tips along the way. And as always, thanks again for watching and painting with Nerd Paints. Thank you.